عليكم السلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد tonight the night of the 6th of the month of Rabi al awwal we continue the reading of usul sunna with the explanation of Shaykh Rabi ibn Hadi al madkhali hafizahu Allah wa ra'a and we were reading the point of manzilatu sunna wa alaqatuha bil quran what is the lover point of the sunna in regard to the quran imam ahmad rahimahullah say as sunna wa sunna indana athar rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sunna tafsir al quran wa hiya dalail al quran wa laysa fi as sunna qiyas wa la tudrab laha al amthal wa la tudrak bil uqul wa la al ahwa inma huwa al ittiba' wa tark al hawa imam ahmad rahimahullah mentioned in this point that is from the fundamentals of the religion which is the report that the sunnah has in regard with the quran what is the position of the quran in regard to the sunnah and imam ahmad rahimahullah said that the sunnah with us it is the narrations of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said the sunnah explains the quran and it is the details of the quran it details the quran and he said there is no sunnah qiyas that there is no qiyas there is no analogy in regard with the sunnah and he mentioned wala tudrab laha al amthal and there is no example to be struck for the sunnah wala tudrak bil uqul wala al ahwa and the sunnah is not to be perceived by way of the intellect or by way of the desires but rather wa inna ma huwa al ittiba' wa tark al hawa the sunnah it is to follow it and not barakallahu fikum to attach oneself to his intellect meaning to abandon one's intellect and there's a question that we wanted to ask inshallah ta'ala before the class that we pray the salatul ish maghrib combined with jum with uh, with isha right we did this it's from the sunnah now if the imam would have get up and say let's pray fajr would you follow him no what huh yeah. is it isha is it isha is it time for isha let me let him answer it huh I close that mean that uh, close that mean that is you know the time of Aisha is in I want him to answer huh you oh, no, don't pass it cuz you got the right answer we don't follow him why because from the sunnah is that only maghrib and isha is to be combined just like only asr and dhuhr could be combined not to combine asr and maghrib but rather only dhuhr and asr and maghrib and so the reason being is this the prophet ne- never did it right so if the imam would have get up it doesn't matter how nice you like his qira'a or whatever the case might be you will just get up and go because you are not to follow him in what in something that the prophet did not do did the prophet do, did the maulud did the prophet make maulud right gammu did the prophet did it then it doesn't matter who's going to do it it doesn't matter who's going to do it and what excuses what proofs he will bring he did not do it in the same way we would not follow the imam to pray maghrib and isha and fajr with him same way we would not follow anyone into celebrating the maulud of the prophet doesn't matter who it is let it be the greatest person in senegal let us be the biggest sheikh in senegal that say let's do it we will not follow him why because the prophet did not do it nor that allah did not yani uh, command it in the quran and the prophet did not do it same way the reason why we will not follow the imam to pray with him maghrib fajr i mean maghrib and isha and and fajr to combine it in one sitting same way we will leave we will not pray behind him the fajr we will just get up and go tell him hey you on you on you on your own with that fajr but amma us we follow the sunnah the same way we will do to those who want to call us to celebrate the maulud because the prophet did not do it 
The prophet did not do it. The companion did not do it. The, those after the companion, the tabi, and they did not do it. In the third generation, 300 years after the prophet, the maulud was not celebrated. So do you think if it was part of the religion, it would be unknown for 300 years? If it was part of the religion, would be something that is so important to be unknown for the messenger, unknown for the sahaba, unknown for the tabi'een, unknown for the atba tabi'een. Will it be unknown to them? For three centuries, this part of the religion is unknown. Allah never revealed it. The Prophet never, for 300 years, they did not do it. So now it is something that is now part of the religion. Is that possible? Is that possible? Now it doesn't matter how many people are doing it. وَلَا تُعْجِبُكَ كَثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثِ do not be amazed of how much filth is widespread. Do not be amazed by how much filth is spread. It will never turn it to be something pure or good. So it doesn't matter if the whole, uni the whole entire humanity are celebrating the mawlud. You, the only one saying, I'm not going to celebrate it. You are upon the truth. You are upon the haqq. Doesn't matter now who is, let, let it be the biggest masjid in Senegal the biggest guy in Senegal celebrating it it is for us to look first and foremost did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do it did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command it did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do it now do you think something that was not known to the messenger to be part of the religion huh is that possible is it possible that today we can come up with the act of worship that the prophet did not know is that is it possible The Mawlud is the, is the birthday of the Prophet. The Mawlud is to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet. Right? The birthday of the Prophet. And the same way, we do not celebrate our birthdays. Because this is known to the, to the Christians. In the same way that the, today the Muslims are foul, and as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, he said, لَتَتَّبِعَنَّ ثُبُلَ مَنْ قَبْلَكُمْ That you will follow the footsteps of those who are before you. Shibra bi shibra. Footstep by footstep until they will, even if they would have entered in the, in the, in the, in the lizard hole that you will enter in it. The Sahaba, they say, who? Ya Rasulullah, al-Yahudu wa nasar he say, fiman. Who else? Who else would it be except the Yahud and the Nasara? So the Yahud and the Nasara, they have invented holidays. Right? In the same way the Muslim, they want to follow them. Who was the first one to celebrate the quote-unquote birthday of their prophets? The Christians. Now the Muslims, they want to exemplify that. The Muslims, they want to they wanna, they wanna copy them in this. So, okay, if the Christians, they following, they, they, they are celebrating the, the birthday of their prophets, then we got to celebrate our birthday too. Because the prophet is more beloved to Allah than any other prophet. So, so this is, Barakallah Fikum, showing that Following the ways of the kuffar, it is only barakallahu fikum going to alter the religion. And we were commanded not to bring no innovation. وَاتَّبِعْ مَا أُنزِلَ مَا يُحَى إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Then follow that which has been inspired to you, that which has been given to you, wahyu, and do not follow the desires of the people. So the same way if the imam would have said, okay, we're going to pray eight raka'ah for Isha. The same way we're going to just... Leave him with his eight rakahs. The same way the individual calling us to maulud, we will not attend. We will not go. We will not support them. We will not give our wealth. We will not even pay attention to their evil and their foolishness. Even if it is my father that is the organizer. Even if it is my mother that is the one cooking their food. It is impermissible for me to partake in this. Why? Because the law for the religion is more important to us than the law for our parents. The law for Allah take precedence for us than the law of our own selves and our children. So, yep. Now, so therefore, the, the Shaykh, Rahimahullah, and we mention in this because we are in this month, Rabi al Awwal, where these innovators, they will be celebrating the Mawlud of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we will not barak Allah fikum to cease to speak against this Insha'Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala Until the doors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Want guidance to hear and obey this Barakallahu al-jami'am 
So therefore, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he say, وَلَيْسَ فِي الْسُنَّةِ قِيَاسِ And there is no analogy in, in, the, in the sunnah. There is no analogy in the sunnah. So the statement that there is no analogy in the sunnah, it is barakallahu feekum, not to say that there is no analogy whatsoever, but rather here, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he say this, in refutation for those who go beyond the limits of bringing an analogy. As he mentioned, barakallahu feekum, إِذَا جَاءَ مَهْرُ اللَّهِ بَطَلَ نَهْرُ مَعْقِلُ if the river of Allah comes, then there will be no use for the river of Maqil. Right? We mentioned the river of Maqil. Maqil was an individual. He used to claim ownership of a river. Right? If he doesn't like you, you ain't going to have a sip from his water. If you don't pay, you ain't going to have a bucket of water. So he was saying that's his water. But guess if the rain comes and the water go beyond there, the river now it's like it's it's flooding everywhere it's like flowing everywhere now who could he have ownership of the water anymore no so therefore idha jaa nahru allah batala nahru maqil if the river of allah comes then there will be no river for maqil he will not have no more ownership of that water so this is the the reason why sheikh rabi hafizahullah mentioned this he said idha jaa an nas fala qiyas if there is a text then we cannot do no analogy no more. If there is a text, we cannot do no analogy in the religion no more. Because there is a text that is present. You only do analogy if, meaning you, meaning the scholars, those who are qualified to do so, to do analogy. Not me and you and anyone else in this, in here. But rather the scholars that are equipped to do analogy. So they will not do analogy if there is a, if there is a text. For instance, you have this individual, this, this, this rationalist, right, from the heads of the Ikhwan al Muslimin today, right, the former Mufti of UAE. What's his name again? He wrote this book that is called Al Halal Wal Haram. He, he wrote this book, Al Halal Wal Haram. He is from Egypt. He wrote Al Halal Wal Haram. Allah hmm? Kulin. Wow, his name just skipped my mind. Qaradawi, Yusuf Al Qaradawi. Did you say Yusuf? Qaradawi. Yusuf Qaradawi, he mentioned that it is okay. It is okay to buy a house on a, on a mortgage, on a riba. Now there is a text. Is it is it a text about riba? There is a text. Well, wa haram Allahu al riba, wa halal Allahu al bayga, wa haram al riba. It's a clear text. Barak Allah fiqum. The Arabs they read it in Arabic, they will know it. The French they will read it in French, they will know it. The British will read it in English, he will know it. The Portuguese will read it in Portuguese, he will know it. The Mandingo will read it in Mandingo, he will understand it. The fuller will read it in fuller, he will understand these words. There is no need to be a graduate from, a, from the highest university to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made buying and selling permissible. And